Before the news, uh, via foxsports.com.au and James Hooper, Mal Meninga set to be appointed South Sydney interim coach to replace Jason Demetrio, breaking now in a left-field bombshell development. Fox League has learned the Rabbitohs board has been presented with a short list of six possible candidates, including Meninga, Michael Maguire and Ben Hornby, with the vote for the current Kangaroos coach being unanimous. Ooh. Fox League understands the Bunnies will cut ties with Demetrio after South Sydney's round six clash against Cronulla and then attempt to immediately fast-track negotiations with Meninga about coming in as an interim coach. The Rabbitohs have a bye in round seven. So after this game, there's two weeks, which the timing's not great for Demetrio, is it, JD? Um, then they've got the Melbourne Storm. Then they've got the three-peat premiers, the Panthers, in round nine. Now, Meninga, an immortal, one of the most respected figures in rugby league, will be approached about coming in as a caretaker coach for the remainder of the year. Do you think he'll do it, Ryan? Well, I, I reckon just for this year, yes. I thought it was going to be one of those jobbies where they'll come in with a three-year deal or something. No. But I can see him coming in for, for six or seven months, whatever it is. Yep. Um, he's the man to do it. Oh, you know he's what? He's the man to do it. So you would think that all the tactical sort of coaching will be done by Ben Hornby, um, who is uh, – you mentioned there that they were looking at him being interim coach. But you bring Mal in, just having the presence well, in the there. Pre- well, you, what you, you've said about Mal that – when he walks into a room, he's the only bloke I've, I ever get that feeling. Yep. You know, Arthur Beetson um, as well, but Mal is, and he he'll stand up in front. I can see what's going to happen. Yep. He'll stand up in front of these blokes, and these blokes will just go, "Oh, oh we're in from we're in some strife." Yeah, and that's what they need. They need to kick up the up the backside. If they can get this over the line, it it would be remarkable. It would be remarkable, especially for South fans too, because they'd be thinking, "Well, there's." There's light at the end of the tunnel. Oh, I feel for JD. Like I'm always been a fan of, and maybe yeah. I'm wrong for this, but um, I, I kind of feel like if someone's giving you the whole off season, and we've seen Sam, look Adam O'Brien last year. You know, it was a rat's what, ass what do you start. Feel sorry, what do you feel sorry for? And he's going to lose his job. Yeah, is, well, is, I, well, I feel no, sorry for anyone losing their job. I, I understand that, but they need to get results. They can't keep. Do you think they can persevere with JD for another four weeks? I think the Mal Meninga call, who who wasn't on the radar, we're no. talking about who could come in. So if, if it was going to be Ben Hornby, with all respect to Ben Hornby, who's already there, I, I would keep Demetrio. But I do think Mal, in this situation, could be the absolute prime candidate. I yeah. actually do. I actually do. Um, but I, I still feel sorry for, for JD. And I, I don't know JD well, but of course, I, I know I, a lot of people who know him. He's a terrific course, bloke. Of course you would feel... You don't want to see anyone lose their job. But how long do you keep losing games before you you just go righto? Well, it's not for me. Yeah, but what 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 annoys me right is some individuals say so they come out under Mal and brain it. You kind of like all oh, right. So you kind of like yeah. Do you harbour any guilt that there's a person out of a job because no, of? No, no, I don't think the South. I don't think any NRL player goes out and purposely not puts in. No, but it's preparation and being ready for the season. Well, whether or not, I don't think any rugby league player. I've played under clubs. I played in, in when coaches have been sacked. And for a man, it, or speaking speaking by my, for myself, you don't go out there hoping a coach gets sacked. I don't believe in. No, no, I don't. I don't believe anyone's white ending him, wanting him to get sacked. No, I don't think so either. But when Mel comes in, he might be able to get that. Just extract five percent yeah, out, out of each player. I don't doubt that that's going to happen. But why? Why would you think they would feel guilty? Maybe it's they don't realise it's in them. Because if if they have been, and this would be on him, him as well. If yeah. he has been, uh, one of the articles said molly coddling people. Or, yeah. Um, and I, I, I apologise, I don't know who wrote that article, but um, I, I do, but I can't think of yeah. it off the top of my head. Um, it's a fair word, for, it's a fair term. Um, I think it might have been Dean Ritchie, Daily Telegraph. If that's the case, well, if he has to sort of harbour some of that blame, or maybe all of the blame, I'm not sure. But I just feel like it was a situation... Why, why is it taking an immortal to get the best out of you? Is that what you're saying? You're a professional athlete? Yeah. Yeah. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I've got an exclusive. I have some audio of Mal Meninga at training today talking oh. to the South players. This is Mal down there at Redfin. Mal Meninga laying down the law. And Mark 27 and origin appearances tonight for Melbourne. It all stems from them. We can stop the market at the market area. They won't make any yards against us. 
We've got to do it for 40 minutes, have a rest, and another 40. We've got to do it. We'll win the game in the 80th minute because we'll do these things. This <laughs> gets so frustrated with that. <laughs> That's what they're in for. Oh, remember that? Oh. Was that 1994 tourist? 1993. 1993. Was that there was... a striped ball? Please tell me there was a striped ball in that game. I think it was a yellow ball. Yeah, it was a yellow Might ball. Have been a yellow ball, oh. black ends. Yeah. Oh, okay. That was really the first time that we'd ever seen at half time. I remember sitting at home watching this. Mm. And when Mal dropped the F bombs, I went, oh, geez. Yeah. Oh, not just the F. Oh, yeah, there was a couple oh, of C's. There was a C's there as well. Oh, yeah, really? Yeah, yeah. yeah. The courage word. Yes. Courage okay, word. so there you go. Uh, that's. Uh, going to be interesting. And, of course, uh, Meninga has also enjoyed a strong rapport with South Sydney stars Latrell Mitchell, Jack White and Cameron Murray, Campbell Graham, who are all part of the Australian Kangaroo squad who won the 2022 Rugby League World Cup with Big Mal at the helm. You do sort of kind of think that they could go on a run with... Geez, that'd be a story, wouldn't it? You the, get the feeling? Netflix, get ready for that. Well, Mal has done this in the past with Queensland. They went on a run. Okay, while well, you're fixing things up now, what about this? Uh, Josh Schuster granted immediate release from Manly Seagulls through Michael Carianis and David Riccio and the Daily Telegraph. The Manly Seagulls have granted Josh Schuster an immediate release from the club despite extending the $800,000 a season back row last year. The back rower has struggled in New South Wales Cup after an indifferent season. He's only 22. Um... Tough off-season, chicken pox, finger surgery. He's got a calf concern. But he was meant to be Manly's long-term 5'8". Hadn't nailed down that spot. Wasn't even named in the 22-man squad to take on the Warriors for Saturday. Instead, he'll play lock for New South Wales Cup feeder club Blacktown against the Warriors in the curtain raiser. So he hasn't been released. He's been granted immediate release if he's able to find another club by the sounds of things. Okay, Brian. Shopped around. 22, 22. Top landing spots. So hang on, let me just work this out. Pro rata, about 350. Is that what he'll uh, command off a new club? Because they it's from November. Yeah, we're probably, we're probably about November. seven of the 12 months into it, into the contract. So 350. 350 is about right. Yep. So some. So some it's, still a bit, it's still a fair bit. Like you yeah. need to have 350 in the cap. Yes, but is he worth 350? To you. you Unle you... Unless Manly copper loss too. Okay. So, well, Manly only going to, maybe they might lose 100. No, th th they'll have to lose some because he's, that's not his market value. No, so so if they if they want somebody to legitimately pay it, okay. they're going to have to take a haircut. Um, he's an X factor, no yep. doubt, when he's on. Yep. He's an X factor. I, I'd say this. He's a better prospect. Well, I'd rather him than when Tavita Pangai went to Penrith. Yep. You know, when that, all that bizzo. I yep. know that does your head in. So, okay, if if you were to know it worked out, say he won a comp or say he had great success, found himself in rep teams, what's the number one landing spot, and I've got a team in mind, that you could look back and go, yeah, that was win-win. That was going to work. So, for example, if you said Penrith, you've got Yo at Lock and you've got Luai, right? So, so that's not really realistic at this stage. A storm? Storm, a stormy at lock, because uh, you're saying to win a competition. So I've got to. Yeah, well, yeah, well, just great yeah. success for, for for it. So in October you go, what a success story that was. Yeah, storm, you reckon? A storm, you know what? Cowboys. Yeah, well, well Toddy's shown Cowboys. Luciano Le Lua was that sort of flamboyant yeah. player he backed. Uh, they've got got a few injuries, season-ending injuries up there. Yeah. Defence is an issue for them, which is not yeah, really his. Yeah, he's got to go to a strong. Mark. He's got to go to a strong. Can I, can I throw you this? Just throw me I, one. I, I kind of reckon. What about a bit of Dale Fanuke and Cam McGuinness, Craig Fitzgibbon in your diet? Sharkies, yeah, yeah, I could see that. Or because because they 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 are just very very good side, but there's they just are, there's something a little yeah, and, and they are they are so attack wise. They are very much all in on Nico. So, what about just get out of Dodge City? What about just getting out of Canberra? Just knock around with the elbow for six yeah, months. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sticky would take him. Sticky. Sticky would flog him and push Ethan in the centres. Sticky would flog him. Or in the back row. Yeah. What's his position? I think he's a lock. 
So do I they have it, do they have to Bryce Carter for him? Think, yeah, he's got to be. He's got to be. Yeah, Bryce Carter. Which Sticky would? Because Sticky would just say you're not passing the ball. Mm. Put the ball underneath you. Well, the obvious ones are the Dogs and Titans and Balmain. Sorry, Tigers, Dragons. Even that, that's not what he needs. No, that's not. Got to go needs. into a system. Yep. Where if he lets them down. The coach and the senior players would let him know. Don't let me down, Bruce. Uh, Lindsay Collins, he doesn't let anyone down. According to the Roosters' website, the Sydney Roosters are thrilled to announce the contract extension of powerhouse forward Lindsay Collins for an additional two years. What a player he's been. He's already signed to the end of 2026, so they've extended him, Brian, quite quickly, quickly yeah. rather than swiftly, to the end of the 2028 season. Yeah, he's become a leader. He's become a big leader. He does things a little bit off centre, you know, with the tanning of the blue region. Yeah, avocados. Avocados up the Chiminda. I mean, whatever <laughs> floats your boat. Correct. Maybe we could be, he, you know, in years to come, he could be on the Dear Jared list. Oh, yeah. Might be a fax coming through. He could Lindsay. be. He could be. But he has grown into a leader. JWH is going, uh, he's an origin player, he's a test player, so well done. I've considered myself very fortunate to be put on the Sydney Roosters jersey and to represent this great club, says Lindsay. We've got a great crew here, and I love coming to work every day. So to know that I'll be a rooster for at least the next four years is something I'm very proud of, said Collins. Yeah, we get him early. Don't let him yep. get a contract. Not many front rowers out there, Sugar. Okay, what about this? Um, I'm all in. Inside the crunch meeting where Latrell vowed to do South proud. Michael Chamis from the City Morning Herald. This is what I'm talking about. The vowing now. This is what I'm talking about. Membership of Latrell Mitchell's inner circle is confined to a select few. Two of those people are his advisor, Matt Rose, and his agent, Walk Wright, who on Monday sat down with the under siege Mitchell, fearing for their friend's state of mind, and this is fair too, and wondering whether it was all getting too much for him. They feared that Mitchell, who had just finished filming a Fox Sports television shoot to promote the NRL's upcoming Indigenous round, may have lost the love for the game. The pair told Mitchell that if he didn't want to play anymore, it was time to quit. That if he was playing only because he thought those closest to him wanted to keep playing, it was time to walk away. Mm. Mitchell declared he wanted to fight on. That he still had unfinished business in rugby league, and in particular at South Sydney Rabbitohs. Wright and Rose were concerned Mitchell's demeanour didn't reflect what he was saying. That he looked like a man weighed down by expectation and pressure. And, and this is why I just think, just take the pressure off the bloke and put him in the centres. Like yeah. it's, The centres is the least demanding position in the competition. That that surely has to be where he comes back, Brian. Well, maybe if, if Mal's there, Mal has coached him at international level, so in the centres. Yeah. Maybe that might come to fruition. But, I, it, but the other thing, too, you can't force blokes to play. If that's what he can, If the coach, you can force him to play where you want. Like, as no, I said, I, no, I, no, I, I, I said to a Dimitri I confidant at the start of the year. I don't mean centre. You can't go, he's not a fullback. No, I'm not talking about, I'm talking about if his headspace is not there. You can't. Enforce him to. We can't make him play. No, like, but you either don't play. Yeah. Like if, if you're gonna play, and if you're under any kind of duress, centre is a position where I'd want someone to play. Well, yeah. If, if they weren't completely into it for whatever reason, I'd want a player to be in the centres for that situation. Well, if his head was, if he, his head's not in it, and on the weekend against the Warriors, and I spoke about this, every time he got the ball, there was something doing. So if this is a player who is only half-hearted, imagine when he's fully focused. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So oh, mate, he's he's an, when he's on, there's none better. Brian, I'll take you back to I'll take you back to the Broncos game, and that's when he had the so, so, at half time when he came on and went set up two and scored one. Yeah, but he scored from the halfway line at the end of the game. No, I saw. I thought you meant so that was against Manly. This is against Vegas. the Bron the yeah. Broncos, right? So the Broncos tough tough side. He scored a try from the halfway line, ends up running around Reese Walsh. That he made it look so easy. Yeah. Like that that's what he can do. He's a freak. He's an absolute gun, but fullback's too demanding at this stage, it appears. David Riccio was on with uh, Breakfast with Vossi and Brandy this morning. Here's what he had to say. Holding tourist. Holding Turi, tourist. Turi, Turi, Hillstorm's going to give it to you. She's there all... are concerns from... Uh, people close to Latrell that he really could up and walk at any point in time, of which at the meeting yesterday he portrayed, uh, you know, an absolute uh, commitment to South Sydney and wanting to continue to play rugby league. Okay, um, well, that's good. I was at that South training news. yesterday, guys. I was yep. at South training, and Latrell was committed as far as training with the B team, uh, knowing that he's obviously out of the starting 
17 for the next three weeks. Uh, working with Jai Gray in the background, you know, talking to Jai about where he needs to be on the footy field. You know, everything you saw visually was a commitment to, to, to being part of this side. Okay, there you go. So we'll, we'll keep an eye on that. And, of course, if you're just joining the coverage, um, breaking news, foxsports.com.au, Mal Meninga in line for bombshell South Sydney coaching appointment, thanks to uh, James Hooper and foxsports.com.au. Uh, Eels prepare to... I love your thoughts on this, Brian. Eels prepare to argue Lomax true value while tying down future <laughs> of the club, uh, which is Talangi. Dan Walsh from the Sydney Morning Herald. Parramatta are prepared to dig their heels in over Zach Lomax's salary cap value as coach Brad Arthur switches up his halves while negotiating a long-term extension for the dropped rookie, Blaise Salangi. Okay, so obviously they're looking to sign Lomax. Mm. But the argument's going to be around, say, for example, say, for example, um, and Phil Gould came out with some comments, which I'm paraphrasing. I, I tend to agree with him. If the Dragons had initially signed him for 800000 yes. say, for example... This is how I'm reading what Gus has said. Say, for example, the Parramatta Reels come out and say, we're going to sign you for 650000 Yep. Then, yes, Zach Lomax is only getting six hundred and fifty, But somebody on the books, salary cap-wise, has got to fork up the one fifty, don't they? Not, not cash-wise, but on the balance sheet of a salary cap. It can't just disappear. Um... Do you understand what I'm saying? Well, it, it sugar, wouldn't it disappear because the money's not going to? Well, that's what Parramatta will argue. Yeah, if they pay him six fifty, they'll say, "Well, well, hang on." Yeah, there's no money going anywhere else. Yeah, but but the, but then they'll say that because um, the, the the converse can also be true where there's players on salary cap values where mm. they might be on five hundred thousand, but they're clearly like a now an eight hundred thousand dollar player. They're not not just getting it. You can't work. No, but it was the NRL value a contract? Don't they? They like you can't sign. A Cameron Munster for four hundred. No, that's right. So and then get third party. Yeah. Isn't his value between six and it, probably six fifty? Probably, yeah. And that's but, what Parramatta are going to argue. But the money's not going to anyone else. No. So w- what are you saying? The one fifty that comes off doesn't that just go into the ether? Yeah, but but because the dragon. No, one, no one's getting it. Yeah, no I, one's I, know, it. I, I know that. So, but the dragons. Yeah. Uh, under this proposal, and this is where it's going to be a sticking point because a lot of money, and particularly when you have these pro-rata deals come the end of the year. So 150000 may not seem too much, but at the end of the year, that one fifty can get you under the current rort of a rule, I think it is. I, I don't think you should be able to do this, but because it's pro-rata, come round 17, you can get $150,000 spend for maybe a $700,000 player, which I don't agree with. Um, but... Well, what do you think? You think it should just be okay? Well, he's he's ripped no up one, 150. So no one's getting the money. The money's not being hidden. No, like uh, Jack Bird's not taking that 150, is he? No, but you're getting clubs who yeah, but so yeah, who, who in the salary cap uh, have 300 thousand dollars for a player who is really worth maybe five or six hundred now. I, I can understand where Gus and maybe others are coming from that. Do the drag do the dragons have to pay for their mistake? Yes, you've got him off the book and you're now not paying him. Yes. But if the Parramatta Reels only come to the party with six fifty, yes. then on the salary cap, you're still got the burden of hundred and fifty. Should the dragons really just be able to wipe their hands with a an eight the, it's a mistake. Yeah. Well no, I, I see what you're saying. For this year only. Yeah. yeah. Or, or or for the for the term of what his contract but, should be. But it, it, isn't he just gonna cop the six fifty? He, yeah. he wants he wants to give up the Yeah, so he's accepting his new value. He wants to get rid of the, the yeah. four fifty. Yep. Righto, you can take a Dragons. Yep. I just want to get out of the Yes, joint. yes. And that's a sticking point. Okay. That's a sticking point. one three hundred oh one eleven seventy. It's an interesting sort of um, case study, I suppose. It is a run home with Joel and Fletch.